In the previous video, we learned how we can calculate hydrostatic forces on plane surfaces. Plane surfaces are the surfaces that if we select any two random points on the surface, the line that co connects these two points are going to lay 100% wholly on the surface. So there are two points. As you can see, this line is exactly over here. And so we learned how to calculate forces, the resultant force, on top of these uh, plane surfaces. Now, in this video, we are going to learn about hydrostatic forces on curved surfaces. So if I select two points over here and connect these two points using a straight line, you'll see that that straight line is not on this curved surface, right? So that's why we call this a curved surface. Um, resultant force is like this on a curved surface, but this resultant force can be divided into two components. It can be divided into the X component or the horizontal component. I'm gonna call it F sub H, which stands for the horizontal component and the Y component right over here. So F V or vertical component, that is like this. And the angle between the resultant force and the horizontal force is theta. All right, so as I said in this video, we are going to learn how we can calculate the resultant force as a result of the horizontal and a vertical force. Um, let's say that we have the values of horizontal and vertical forces. How can we calculate the resultant force? You are going to use this very familiar equation that allows you to find the resultant force based on horizontal and vertical vectors. So it would be horizontal to the power 2 plus vertical force to the power 2, and then the entire thing is under a square root. So this is the magnitude, right? And remember that whenever we wanted to talk about forces, specifically hydrostatic forces, we talk about magnitude and also the direction. Now, if you want to find the direction, well, this is theta, and essentially this is a triangle over here, right? So the triangle over there would be tangent of theta, would be the opposite side, which is equal to F sub V, divided by adjacent side. So theta is equal to F sub V divided by F H. This is the angle, the line of action of this F sub R. Now we have the magnitude and the direction of the resultant force calculated over here. Um, next, I'm going to talk about how you can calculate F sub H, the horizontal, and the vertical forces that are acting on this curved surface. It's going to be a little bit different from calculating FR on a plane surface, and we're going to talk about it just in a second. All right, to calculate the horizontal component of the resultant force on a curved surface, the equations that you're going to use are pretty straightforward and easy, and you should be familiar with that. So the horizontal force is going to be gamma h bar a sub vp. Gamma is the specific weight of the liquid or, or the fluid that you have. h bar is the distance to uh, the center of gravity. And the difference would be over here. This a sub vp is the vertically projected area. Okay, let me define this vertically projected area for you. Let's say that I have a curved surface right over here. And this curved surface looks like this. If I have a flashlight over here, and I have a vertical surface right over here, the projection, the vertical projection of this curved surface on this vertical surface right over here is going to be right over here. Okay, so if this surface is a surface like this, or essentially, it's a curved surface like this. So if you have light in this direction and you have a vertical surface over here, how do you see the vertical projection of this curved surface? You're going to see it like this. And this is a rectangular area. So the rectangular area that I'm, I will see, which is the vertical projected area, would be something like this. And in the middle of it, I have 
the centroid or center of gravity of this vertically projected surface. This area, the area of this rectangle, is the vertically projected area that goes over here. And h bar is, in this example, is the distance from the surface of the fluid all the way to the center of gravity. Okay, so this is how you calculate the magnitude of horizontal force. Now, how do we calculate um, y or the distance from the surface of water to that specific point? I'm going to call it hp for the horizontal force. And that's going to be, again, very similar to what we calculated for plane surfaces. But this time, I'm going to use h bar for the vertically projected area. All right, so this is how you calculate the horizontal force. Now you're going to talk about the vertical component. The vertical component is very straightforward. In order to calculate the vertical force on a curved surface like this, the only thing that you need to do is to calculate the weight of column of water on top of the curved surface. So this W over here, if I want to define it, this is the weight of column of water on top of the surface. Now, according to principles of fluid mechanics, we know that weight of the fluid, if I want to calculate the weight, is equal to specific weight times volume. So if I know the volume of the column of water on top of the surface, so this is volume of the column of water, and then multiply the volume by specific weight, that gives me the weight of column of water, which is equal to vertical force. Okay, all right, this is the magnitude of the vertical force. Now we are going to find out how we can determine uh, the place that this acts through, right? So F sub B acts uh, through the centroid of the volume of water on top of this. So if I want to write it, let me change the color. So these are the things that you need to know about horizontal and vertical forces. And now we're going to talk about an example to make this crystal clear. All right, so in this example, we have a gate. And this gate is a part of a circle that has a radius of 3 meters. Um, we want to calculate the magnitude of hydrostatic force and also the line of action, the location, the position of hydrostatic force. In order to do that, we know that this is a curved surface, so we need to use we need, in order to find the resultant force, or F sub R, we need to figure out F sub H, the horizontal force, and also the vertical force. So we're going to take steps and calculate these. I'm going to start with the horizontal force and write the equation. Our fluid is water, and then H bar times vertically projected area. Okay, let's find H bar. Um, H bar is essentially the distance from the surface of water to the center of uh, centroid, center of gravity of the vertically projected area. What is the vertically projected area? So this is a curved gate that has the width of 1.5 meter into the screen, right? In other words, if I want to show you how this gate looks like, this gate is something like this. It's curved like this. And you can see the width inside the screen is this distance over here, which is 1.5 meter. So if I want to show you the vertically projected area, it would be something like this. So this is essentially, again, if this is my paper, the ver vertically projected area is like that. And then I know that the width into the screen is 1.5 meters. And the height or length of this is 3 meters, right? Because this is the radius of that circle, so 3 meter. All right, um, now that I have this, I know that for a rectangular surface like this, the centroid or center of gravity is right in the middle of it. So this is going to be the center of gravity. If I ask you what is the value of h bar, you're going to tell me from the surface of water all the way to the middle, this is going to be h bar. So in my case, 
This is the middle of this surface, the vertically projected area. H bar is going to be 3 divided by 2 meters. And I'll write it right over here. It looks like you cannot see it in your screen, so I'm going to write it over here. H bar is 3 divided by 2. And now you should see it better. Okay. So we do have the value of H bar right now. How about vertically projected area? So this vertically projected area is the area of a rectangle. So if I want to calculate A sub VP, that would be 3 meters times 1.5 meters, right? And this would be in meters squared, uh, the value of vertically projected area. Okay, let's put the numbers in this equation. Gamma of W 9810 times H bar is 3 divided by 2 times area, uh, 3 times 1.5. Obviously, this and this will cancel out this one. And the number that you get, if I take a look at my notes, 6,621. 6, and this is, this is the value in uh, Newton. You can write this in kilonewton to be 6.62 kilonewton. All right, so we calculated the horizontal force, right? And the horizontal force is acting at this point. This would be F sub H, the horizontal force. Now we want to calculate the vertical force. And I know that the equation for vertical force is going to be this. And W is the weight of the column of water on top of the surface AB. So I'm going to write W, A, B. And I know that W, or weight, is gamma of water times volume on top of surface AB. Okay, so if I can find the volume on top of this surface, the volume of water, I can easily figure out this. Um, it's easy to calculate. This is one-fourth of a circle, right? So if I want to calculate the cross-sectional area, this area, the area would be one-fourth of the area of the entire circle, right? So area times width, which is 1.5, is going to give me the value of volume. So what I want to say, let's call this point over here point C. And I can write volume that is on top of AB to be equal to area of ABC times 1.5 meters, which is the width of this gate. And this gives me the volume. Okay. And area of ABC is going to be one-fourth of an area of a circle. This circle has a radius of three meters, so it would be pi r to the power two, three to the power two. Perfect. Let's put this in this equation and calculate the vertical force. Um, And the value you get, if I take a look at my notes, it's go, after converting it to kilonewton, is going to be 104.01 kilonewton. Okay. And this is the vertical force that you get. Now we want to calculate the resultant force on this surface of AB. And the resultant force, you know that I showed you a couple of minutes ago how you can calculate that. So the resultant force. We do have the value of horizontal and vertical force, so it's just plugging in all the numbers, and the value of resultant force in kilonewton would be 123.3 kilonewton. All right. This is the magnitude of the resultant force. Now, we need to calculate two things. Number one, theta. Theta, if this is the resultant force, theta, theta would be this angle. So... <clears throat> tangent of theta is f sub v divided by f sub h. We do have the both values, so I just need to calculate the uh, inverse tangent of theta, and according to that, then I can calculate 
theta over here. I do not have the value in my notes, so I will let you calculate the value of theta based on f sub h and f sub v that we get. Okay, next I'm going to wipe the board and calculate about the exact location, x and y, that this resultant force is going to act on. So let me give you another representation of curved surface A, B over here, A, B. And this was one-fourth of a circle. There we go. Um, so I want to find the exact location of the center of pressure. Specific, this point, center of pressure, is important because the horizontal force and vertical force are acting through this specific point. Okay, and this is obviously our resultant force. And this was theta. So I want to find this is yp, or let's call it just y. And this distance over here is x. And obviously this is the surface of water too, right? As you can see over here. Okay, so now I want to find x and y. Finding y is easy because you know the equation for that. y or, in this case, I want to say hp because hp and y, since this is a vertical, are going to be the same thing. It's going to be equal to y, h bar, moment of inertia, h bar, and vertically projected area. Okay, so the only thing over here is that you need to find this value. And this value is usually in your textbook, in the back cover or front cover, you can find the moment of inertia over here. For this vertically projected area, which is a rectangular area, you can see that I bar is equal to width times h to the power 3 divided by 12. Okay, and we have already calculated the value of h bar and vertically projected area. So let's just put them over here. Okay, so 1.5 plus 0.5 is two meter. That would be this value over here. So this gives me a Y. Now I need to find X. In order to find x, again, you need to use the table that you use to find i bar. And when you do that for a quarter circle or for a half circle, the value of x is given to you. And that value of x that is given to you is 4 over 3 r divided by pi. In our case, Okay, now we know the value of x. Okay, so just to recap what I've done in this example, in the previous board that I wrote, I calculated the magnitude of hydrostatic force on this uh, surface AB, which is a curved surface, and I calculated theta right over here. And in this board, I calculated the value of y and x, which gives me the exact coordinate of where my pressure, central pressure is.